So that's the story of Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the same. Exodus 12, verse 15 says, Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and from the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from all of your houses from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall, be, shall perish from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. That means we're going to have a meeting. Okay? It means that all the children of Israel came together. And on the seventh day, there should be a holy convocation, which is a Sabbath, by the way. That's the definition of Shabbat. To you, no manner of work shall be done in them, except that which man must eat. That only he may be prepared by you. So in the story of the Exodus and in the story and in the details of Passover and unleavened bread, here's what we've got so far. They chose an unblemished lamb on the tenth of the first month. Okay, so on Nisan 10, uh, which is the modern calendar, but it was originally called Aviv because the uh, barley would be Aviv or ripened. Okay, so on the 10th of Aviv, they would choose the unblemished lamb and parade it through the streets in Jerusalem. They inspected it for four days. Four days they inspected it. The high priest would deem it clean and they sacrificed it on the 14th between the evenings. I'm going to explain what between the evenings mean. It's really between 3 and 6 p.m., but I'll give you a graphic here to show it in just a minute. And then they put the blood on their doorposts. So now we're going to get into the timeline. We're going to find out exactly when Yeshua died. What is this between the evening th the thing? We're going to get into some of the statistics and the math. Find out how it lines up. The entire Feast of Unleavened Bread starts in the evening of the 14th, which begins the 15th and goes until sundown the 21st. So it's 15th to the 21st. The first day, the 15th, and the seventh day, the 21st, are high Sabbaths. Okay, that's important. So here's what it looks like. You shall keep it till the 14th day of the same month, then at the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it between the evenings. So on the black, on the left-hand side, is the 14th, the, the night of the 14th. So the night of the 14th, and then you have the 14th day. And then you have the beginning of the 15th starts in the evening. Because remember, biblical days start in the evening. So it goes evening to evening. And then there was one day and God said it was good. So that's how it works. So the 14th in Roman time starts at 12 a.m. at midnight. And that's kind of close. But it backs up until sunset on the biblical time period. Okay? And so the night of the 14th starts the 14th. You go through the entire 14th. And when you get to noon, okay, that's what they called the first setting, all right? So the first setting of the sun started at noon. The second setting of the sun was when it actually went down, which makes logical sense. The sun starts to go down, and they call that the sun is setting, the first setting. So that's why it says between the settings. It's a first century understood idiomatic expression that meant between noon 01 and 6 p.m., when the sun went down, that's called between the settings. And that's why he was, he was uh, sacrificed between the settings at 3 o'clock. And this feast, the first century historian Philo says this, And this feast is begun on the 15th day of the month, in the middle of the month, on the day on which the moon is full of light, in consequence of the providence of God taking care that there shall be no darkness on that day. Now, just so you know that I, I put this in here for one purpose, to show that there was tremendous spirituality in the first century, even among those that weren't really followers of Yeshua. They're even looking for, for connections in the Bible, and they were connecting. These weren't just obligatory feasts. I mean, they were connecting things, and they connected the idea that, wow, God must have chosen a full moon because he didn't want a single person to have darkness during this time. He wanted this to be a time of celebration. Josephus says this, So these high priests, upon the coming of that feast, which is called the Passover, when they slay their sacrifices, from the ninth hour to the eleventh, but so that a company not less than ten belonging to every sacrifice. So we're just giving you a little bit of a historical context here that these things were done. In Matthew 27, 46, it says this, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, 
That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So does he die? We're going to get into which day he's going to die on now. Does he die on Wednesday the 14th, Thursday the 15th, or the traditional Friday? Let's discover the answers. First of all, you have to understand inclusive reasoning. That much of the Bible's numbers come from what's called inclusive reckoning. Excuse me, inclusive reckoning. Inclusive reckoning is this. I'm going to give you an example where God actually counts by inclusive reckoning. Much of the debate on when Yeshua died is based on whether the numbers should be inclusive or should they be exclusive reckoning. And I'll explain both in just a second. Exodus 19.16 is a great example of inclusive reckoning. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Okay? So look at this. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain. God, before this, he actually says, today and tomorrow and on the third day. And so the day that God actually speaks it he counts it as a day, even though it could be just a couple hours before the sun goes down. Does that make sense? Just like we would say that today and tomorrow. The third day is actually the day after tomorrow in English because it counts a day, tomorrow, and then the third day. And we see this continually. We also see this in Jonah. Also uses inclusive reckoning. When he's found three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, and the night that he's sleeping in the middle of the night is counted as one of the nights. So if exclusive reckoning would not count that day. So if I said, hey, let's meet up in two days. And inclusive reckoning would mean I'm counting today and I'm counting tomorrow. So I want to meet you at tomorrow, at the end of tomorrow. If inclusive reckoning is the way that we, we talk. In American, we don't do inclusive reckoning. We do exclusive Reckoning. So we don't almost ever count today when we're actually counting. Is anyone confused yet? Basically, bottom line is this. In America, in Western Roman thinking, we don't count the day that we're talking about. But in, in first century Hebrew times, they always counted the, the day that they, were, that they were speaking of it. So that they said three days, it counted the day that they said it as one day. And that was part of the three days. We're in America. If I said, meet me in two days, I would not be meeting tomorrow. I'd be meeting the next day. But back then, that's not how it worked. Let's find out if Wednesday is the day that Yeshua died. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 says this. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. Okay. So we got to figure out what this word early means because this is really, really important. Because Mark chapter 16 verse 9 says this, he says he rose early on the first day of the week. The first day of the week in Gregorian calendar is Sunday. It says he rose early. So we better find out what that word means. And if you look at the word early, it means at dawn. That's what it means. It's in the morning, early in the morning, the fourth watch of the night between 3 o'clock and 6 a.m. in the morning. That's the fourth watch. That's the Greek word that's used here to mean early. It, I know that in, uh, in a lot of Messianic circles, they really, really, really want, and I was one of them at one time, really wanted Messiah to raise from the dead right at the closing out of Shabbat, going into the first day of the week, and I wanted the word early to mean that early. But you can't take the Greek word which means at dawn and put it at the, between the evenings. You can't put it at sundown because that's not what it means. The word literally means at first break of light. Well, when the sun is going down, that's not the first break of light. Okay, And so there's no way that uh, we can have Yeshua raising from the dead in the middle of the night, we can't have him raising from the dead right when the sun goes down on Saturday. He has to raise from the dead exactly the way the disciples used the right word for, which is in English they would have said, now he rose right before dawn. And I would imagine it would have been probably right crack to the millisecond as the sun was coming up prophetically in Jerusalem. The sun is coming up 
in Jerusalem. Wednesday, here we go. Let's keep going on this and see if we can discover something else. Luke chapter 24, verse 21. On the road to Emmaus. Remember, he appears to a couple of disciples on the road to Emmaus. But we were hoping that it was he that was going to redeem Israel in this conversation that they're having. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since these things happen. So if we have a Wednesday crucifixion, we have a big problem with Luke chapter 24, verse 21, because the disciples are saying it's the third day since these things happen. So if you have Wednesday, you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's five days. Even if you don't use inclusive, it's four. There's, it's impossible to have this scripture line up with a Wednesday crucifixion, because even if you don't choose uh, Wednesday uh, inclusively and you only count Thursday and Friday and Saturday and the day that they're doing it, it's still four days. These are the two rules. We, got, we have to line up with Luke chapter 24, verse 21, that it's been three days, or this is the third day since these things happened. And Matthew 12, 40 says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So we've got to get three days and three nights. And it's, when the disciples on the road to Emmaus say it's been three days since this happened, these are our two major rules that we, have to, we, have to, we can't break. If we break one of these, these rules, then this, these particular scriptures uh, don't work. And we know that they're the truth. So here we go. On a chart, Wednesday. If it's Wednesday, we've got four days and four nights inclusive or three days and four nights exclusive reckoning. So on Wednesday, if he dies on Wednesday, we count Wednesday, we count all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's four days, and then nights, we count Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, because we know he rose fourth watch on Saturday. So that's four days and four nights, if you use the traditional biblical time uh, of inclusive reckoning. If you don't use inclusive and you use exclusive, which is not normal in the Bible, then you have, you don't count Wednesday, you count Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so you do get three days, but you have to count Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. And so we break the Jonah rule of three days and three nights, no matter how you do it on Wednesday. So forget about all, for those of you Bible students out there, forget about all the scriptures that are you trying to figure it out. It's got to break. It cannot break those two rules. You don't have to look at Wednesday any further because we've got four nights. No matter how you do it, there's four nights because he rose from the grave Sunday morning. The people that say that he uh, died on Wednesday are the proponents, and I used to be one of them actually, uh, have the Messiah raising. The only way to do it is have him raising Saturday night so it doesn't go through the night. But we know that breaks the scripture of him rising at dawn, along with all kinds of, of prophetic uh, uh, shadows that I'm going to show you a little bit later. Also, by the way, the only year with a Wednesday of Eve, and we get this off of NASA's website, with a 14th of Aviv or a full moon, is 27 AD, which puts his birth at 6 BC, which is impossible, okay? Because this date is far too early, and it's impossible based on new evidence of a 1 BC death of Herod and John the Baptist going into ministry in 29 AD, okay? And I'm not going to go into all the details on that, but I can because I could spend 20 minutes, uh, you know, proving that. But basically, there's new scholastic academic evidence out that Herod died 1 BC, all right? And with John, we know for a fact that his ministry started 29 AD or right about that time because we have historical uh, documents to prove that. And uh, when uh, Tiberius came in and so on and so forth. So there's no way for Yeshua to be born 6 BC, which automatically puts out a Wednesday uh, crucifixion because the, just the flat out, the, the numbers don't work. So now let's move to Friday and find out the traditional Friday. Believe it or not, most of Christianity, Catholic or not, believes that he died on a Friday because we adopted this right from our Catholic predecessors. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 says this, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, again, there's our rule. It's got to be three days and three nights. We've got to have three days and three nights, and it's got to be three days since these things happen. So let's find out. You get to the calendar, if he dies on a Friday, using inclusive reckoning, count with me, Friday and Saturday 
That's it. You can only get two days. You can't count Sunday. The Catholics will count Sunday inclusively, but you can't count Sunday for three days and three nights in the grave. Why? Because he rose before the day break. Okay? So you can't count even a second of it because it says he rose before the daybreak. They got there. Mary gets there before the sun comes up. He's already gone. Okay? Because he rose right at dawn, right before dawn. If you, if you count that, so you got Friday and Saturday, you get two days. Now let's count the nights. Friday night and Saturday night. There's just no way to get three days and three nights from a Friday crucifixion. So I know that uh, giving grace, most of us didn't think of these things growing up. We just you know, thought of, uh, you know, died on Friday. But it's embarrassing, if you agree with me, in front of an atheist, that we can't even count to three. And they want, they, we want them to believe in our God. And when we can't even count to three. So why are all these things important? It's important because, folks, this, our entire salvation is built off of Yeshua and Him dying on the cross. We need to understand the basic 101s that they understood. What's embarrassing is that we even have to teach this, what was already understood in the Scriptures. So here we go. I pulled this off of NASA's website. 27 AD was April 9th. That's a Wednesday. 28 AD was a Monday. So in other words, the 14th of Aviv, is a, when, the, when the Passover lamb uh, was given, was a Monday. That doesn't work. On the 29th, 29 AD, it was a Sunday. On 30, it was a Thursday. On 31, it was a Sunday. On 32, it was a Monday. On 33, it was a Friday. Okay? You can't go to 33. That's impossible because it breaks all of the other rules of math of when people were born and when Herod died and so on and so forth. John the Baptist went in the ministry. The only one that works is 30 AD when he dies on Thursday. But we're going to look on 33 AD is the only one for a Friday. So if people believe in a Friday crucifixion, they have to go to 33 AD. Praise God for NASA that has done their astrological homework because this automatically eliminates Friday. It can't be 33 AD because of the math. And many people would love it to be 33 AD because Yeshua was 33 years old, but the truth is is he could not have been born at 0 or 1 BC or 1 AD. It just doesn't work out. And again, I don't have time to go through all of that, and that's not my point. But my point is just to show uh, the mathematical impossibility of having a crucifixion on a Friday. So the problem is that 33 AD is far too late and puts the birth after the death of Herod. We know that Herod is alive during the birth of Yeshua because he's the one that calls to kill all the kids under the year, year of two, uh, two years of age and younger and younger. So he's got to be alive. Herod would already be dead by 33. AD, if there was a 33 AD crucifixion. So let's go to Thursday and discover if this is the most logical choice. Again, three days and three nights is rule number one, and it's got to be at least three days on the road to Emmaus. So let's do the math. If he dies on Thursday, and we use inclusive reckoning, Thursday is a day, Friday is a day, Shabbat is a day, that's three days. Let's count the nights. Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. No matter how you do it, it's three days and three nights. 